If you're new to pickleball, you know that there is no shortage of advice, especially when it comes to the non-volley zone. Someone tells you, run up as fast as you can, and then the next person says, no, no, stay back. It's no wonder we're confused. And it's one of the most common questions that I get. If you're not sure how to get from the baseline to the non-volley zone, it's one of the easiest strategies in pickleball. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's CJ Johnson. If you're confused about how to transition from the baseline to the non-volley zone, um, you probably should be. When we're new, we don't always understand that there is a difference between the serving team and the returning team. It's a little bit more complex for the serving team because of the double bounce rule, but for the returning team, it's probably the simplest strategy to master in pickleball. Let's break it down into two parts and let's start with the simplest one first. How to get from the baseline to the non-volley zone when you're the returning team. Before we get to that, if you're new to this channel, welcome. We talk about all things pickleball, from gear to instruction, with a special focus on the player who's over 50. If you don't want to miss any upcoming videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification. That way you'll know when a new one is posted. Here's the basic strategy when you are the returning team. Run to the kitchen as fast as you can. Think, hit and run. I often think that when people are learning a new skill, they get confused because it's not just about the skill. They need to know why they're doing it and when they're doing it. So let's start with those. Why do you want to hit and run when you're the returning team? It's a tactical advantage. When one team is at the non-volley zone and the other isn't, they've shortened the distance between the teams and taken away the opposing team's most precious resource, time to react. That means that the team at the non-volley zone controls the point. Now let's talk about the when. Whenever you are the returning team, think, hit, and run. It's important that you stop to hit the shot. You need to stop your body's forward momentum. That way, you'll be more consistent. After you've hit the shot, make a beeline and get as far as you can to the non-volley zone. Next, let's talk about the how. There are a couple strategies that you can use to get from the baseline to the non-volley zone when you're the returner. Some of those depend on your speed. One of those strategies is the soft, deep return. And I covered that in detail in a video, which you'll find up here, a couple of weeks ago. The other strategy to use is the split step. So after you hit your shot, as you're running forward, you might not get all the way to the non-volley zone, and that's where you utilize the split step. The split step is simply a move where you split your feet and bounce on the balls of your feet. What that does is it stops your forward momentum, and it allows you to move side to side. You want to make sure that you stop and split step when you see your opponent ready to hit the shot. After you've done that, then move forward all the way to the non-volley zone. If you want some more detail on the split step, make sure that you check out this video. One of the questions I'm often asked is, CJ, I understand the importance of getting to the non-volley zone, but I play with these people who are really good at lobbing. I feel that if I stay back at the baseline, I have a better chance of returning that law. Okay, I can understand the logic behind that. And while it seems logical, that's not what I usually see in practice. Players become accustomed to staying at the baseline no matter what type of shot is hit. That creates a split between the partners, and that's the weakest position a team can be in. It also gives your opponents, the serving team, a chance to get all the way to the non-volley zone and then take in control of the point. Now you've given up the advantage you have as the returning team. Here's the other reality. The lob to the baseline is not a high percentage shot. Now I'm not saying that some players don't hit it and hit it very well. There are a couple of strategies that you might be able to use if you're playing against one of them. I think perhaps the simplest strategy is if you're playing against someone who hits a great lob, return the ball to their partner. Chances are 
that both partners do not hit the lob equally as well. Here's tip number two. While you're coming up to the net, make sure to watch the paddle face. In order to hit the lob, the paddle face needs to be open. Now, it can look like a third shot, but frankly, most people, except for the top level players, don't disguise it that well. If you think you see an open paddle face and the shot might be a lob, utilize that split step right away. By stopping your forward momentum, you're gonna make it easier to turn around and go backward to defend if it happens to be a lob. And the last thought is rely on your partner. Depending upon the direction and the trajectory of the lob, you might not be the one who should turn around to get it. That may just be your partner's shot. Remember, if you're the returning team, hit and run. Come back next week and we will be talking about what to do when you're the serving team. In the meantime, click the like button or share this with a pickleball playing friend because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.